Hello and good evening to everyone and a very warm welcome for today's webinar. Enjoy the pause menopause. I'm Dr. Sazia Salmani from the Other Song Clinic and I welcome all of you to, for today's webinar. So 8th of March was International Women's Day and we are celebrating women this whole week. But it's also important to understand what are the stages of life a woman goes through. So first comes childhood and then comes puberty, which marks the beginning of the reproductive age of a woman, which involves pregnancy and delivery. And then comes the climactic period or menopause. These are the life events which are unique to a woman. A woman's body undergoes through various hormonal changes through these life stages. Today, we are discussing the stage of a woman's life called the menopause, which comes with this vast array of distressing symptoms, which not only affect her physical, but as well as her mental health. But where there is darkness, there is also light. And shedding light on this very important topic is with us, Dr. Sunita Gandhi. Dr. Sunita Gandhi is a senior homeopath practicing for the last 26 years in Mumbai. She consults out of her own clinic in Lokanwala and Dheri and also is a senior consultant at the Other Song Clinic. Her passion for healing the sick and spreading the awareness drew her to teaching the art and science of homeopathy. And she's been teaching advanced techniques in the practice of homeopathy in various courses held at the Other Song International Academy. She's also very popular among the homeopathic students for her fun and unique way of teaching. Having known her for the past almost eight, nine years, I can say that she's extremely hardworking and who's always eager to learn. She's very dedicated to her patients and to homeopathy. And I would even call her a perfectionist in that aspect. On a personal level, she's one of the most kind and warm person one could have come across. She radiates warmth and light to the all around her. So without further ado, I would like to welcome our ever smiling, ever youthful speaker, Dr. Sunita Gandhi. Hello everybody. It is so nice to see all in big numbers today present at this very special event. Uh, why I call this special is because I know that a lot of women are going through this phase called menopause. Dr. Shazia rightly said that this is one, one of the, you know, one of the three phases a woman goes through, birth, puberty, and menopause. And sometimes this phase lasts very, very long in a person. And most women do not realize that they're going through this phase and they do not realize why they are experiencing these symptoms. So today, my aim would be in this presentation to make you aware what the symptoms are. A couple of ladies come to my clinic and you know they are talking about their issues and they feel, God, I think I need to visit a psychiatrist. I am going through so much mess in my life. And actually, when I hear them, there isn't any mess. The mess is created by the hormones. You know, hormones play a very, very important role in, um, in our life, in a woman's life. Beginning puberty, the hormones just surge in and then there is havoc at that time. During menopause, the hormones all start fading away and it just again creates a big havoc. So today I'm going to take you through this whole period which is painful for some. But what I'm gonna tell you is how we can make it something that we can breeze through, something that we can enjoy, something that we can even look forward to because it may appear distressing, but it can be one of the most beautiful phases in a woman's life. So let's go th through this together. And uh, I'm, I'll be more than happy to answer questions, but my urge would be, uh, let's keep it at the end. Dr. Shazia will be going through all of it and we'll have enough time to discuss. Let's enjoy the pause, menopause. Let this phase be a, a phase that we can go through with ease and come out with a breeze. So let's talk about what exactly is menopause. So menopause is the time in a woman's life when her periods stop and they stop for over a year. There will be a time when the periods become irregular, they may become scanty or they may become huge. They may become, you know, a, a lot in quantum or they may become frequent. 
But when it stops and you do not get your periods for over 12 months, that is when we label, okay, you have now stepped into menopause. Any time before that is called premenopause. This signals the end of the reproductive function of the body. That means now she can no longer bear children. There are three stages. As I spoke earlier, there is perimenopause, a phase which is before and after actually the main menopause. Then there is the menopause proper and then there is postmenopause. What do we see in perimenopause? Here the, the cycles, the ovaries start producing less estrogen and progesterone. These are the female hormones. And uh, there is a, there's a decline. And then you see the fluctuations that happen in periods, sometimes twice a month, sometimes skipping a month, sometimes huge in quantum, sometimes scanty. Then this, this period can last many, many years. You know, you, it can even start early, which we call early menopause. Normally, menopause should start post 40, 42, 45 years of age. But sometimes what I have seen in my clinical practice with the advent of today's era of fast foods, uh, of high stress, of competition, we see that the hormones start declining early in a woman, sometimes even as early as 30 or 35. And that's when you kind of need treatment. We have treated huge number of patients homeopathically for early menopause also, so that you know we can prolong their productive life. People come to us for infertility, not being able to bear children. I mean, who gets married at 20 these days? Like our parents' generation, my mom got married at 19. My mother-in-law, I think, also got married at 18 and 19. We got married in our 20s. Now women are progressive, they are working, they are studying for longer uh, ages. So marriage gets delayed, but along with all the work comes the stress, uh, comes the new lifestyle. Going through an early menopause can also be a big problem. Their productive, their reproductive life reduces and they come with primary infertility not able to bear a child, married for two, three, four years, married for five years, at the age of 35, not able to conceive. What do you do then? So answer, we have excellent treatment in homeopathy for all phases of menopause, whether it's early menopause, perimenopause, or menopause. I'm going to show you how. Menopause is the time when for 12 months, no periods. So as I said, most of the time, it is around 40 to 45 to 55. You know, we can't label that, okay, you're 40 and menopause starts. But this is generally the time we'll see in vast number of women. After the phase of menopause is over, then we have what is called the post-menopause. Here are all the symptoms of menopause, which I'm going to be telling you now immediately after this, will start going away. The, the mood changes, the physical symptoms of hot flashes start easing and kind of things become easier. But at that time, the risk of two major illnesses also rises. That's osteoporosis and cardiac disease. That is heart disease. So again, we need to manage menopause well so that post-menopause also, one does not go through these symptoms. Once when your estrogen level decreases, your uh, heart can have issues. Your bones become uh, weak. You know, osteoporosis, when it gets depleted of calcium and can lead to early fractures. Why we see, you know, older women have one small fall and then they have a hip fracture. That's because their bones are getting depleted. Estrogen, our lady's hormone, is required to keep that going. So uh, lots of physical and mental uh, issues that go through. This whole period from premenopause to menopause to postmenopause is not a matter of few months. It can be anything from two to 12 whole years. Imagine when you're sick for seven days it, and you're out of work, you wonder, my God, it's a very long time. This we are not talking about days or weeks or months. The issues that a woman goes through menopause can go as long as a decade or more. So let's, let's help our ladies go through this. 
let's understand what happens in menopause. So if you will see, when I keep talking about the estrogen, the female hormone, it starts rising around puberty. Around age 20, it kind of gets almost 75, 80%. By 30, 35, you're at your peak. And after that, you'll see as the red color reduces, estrogen levels drop from 40 onwards. At 50, they're almost half. At 60, it's almost... 75% gone. So this is the phase from 40 to 60 or 45 to 55 when the whole issue gets more because the estrogen levels drop. And this is the array of changes that can happen in a person. If you begin with the brain, there's something called a menopausal fog. You know, suddenly they can't remember things. I'm going to be discussing each of them in detail, but I'm giving you a brief with this slide. You can't remember things. You open the fridge. You wonder what you wanted to do. You go into a room thinking, I was about to do something that I don't know what. You know, there, there is a dullness. There's a fogginess in the mind. A lot of sleep changes that happen. Mood changes. There is uh, changes in the breast. They can be irregular periods urinary incontinence, loss of sexual desire or libido, weight gain. I don't like this. A uh, lot of, lot of women find changes in their body, vaginal dryness, skin conditions, bone loss, osteoporosis that I spoke of, hot flashes. This is sometimes the most presenting symptom. Like uh, when people come to us in the clinic, I think they're probably the first line that they come up with is I don't know what's happening to me and I am getting into a sweat all the time. I'm hot all the time. I'm, you know, I'm just feeling the heat all over me. And that's one of the earliest signs that we'll see of menopause and hair loss. So let's, let's talk about a little about some of the important symptoms and see how we can help through that. Problems we know, let's look at even the solutions. Irregular periods. Now, as I said, periods can, you know, uh, be once in a month, twice in a month, no periods for two months, once in three months. So you can skip a month or you can get it more frequently. The quantums can increase or decrease. But a little word of caution, even you're going through menopause and your cycles are irregular, you can still get pregnant. So, you know, take proper precautions if you are not wanting to get pregnant because pregnancy can occur regardless of the menstrual irregularities. A lot of women thinking now the periods have stopped and I have kind of reached menopause, stop taking precautions. They don't want a child, but they don't take precautions while having intercourse also. So, and come up with pregnancies at an older age, which is again, another topic for another time. So this can happen to your periods hot flashes. This is, I think, I've had maximum patients presenting with this. Sudden bursting into sweats, sudden feeling of heat, temperature sore. You know, I had this one patient uh, who would say that I cannot sleep on the bed at night. I have to lie down on the floor because, the you know, she sleeps on marble floor and the floor is cold and she needs that coldness. And then she says, you know, I put my hands on the walls like this because the walls are also cold and there's a wall here. She says, I sleep on the floor with my hands. So the heat is so much in the night that it disturbs the sleep that they look for respite anywhere. So what can you do to manage the hot flashes? If this is going to be there if you're going through menopause. Of course, homeopathy helps beautifully in all these phases. But a few things that you can do on your own. See to it that you're not having those kind of foods that make you hot, you know, don't have spicy food or, you know, uh, very hot tea, very hot coffee, alcohol, uh, you know, try and wear, you know, uh, lighter clothes like uh, cotton clothing that will absorb the heat instead of making you wear, you know, if you wear these synthetic clothes, does not absorb sweat and you're feeling hot all the time have a glass of cold water within reach. So whenever you're going through a hot flash, take a moment, sit, breathe, take a glass of water, let that phase settle down. It's very important to 
identify that these are the things that can get me into the hot flash try and avoid like my my patient felt keeping the hands on the wall is something that gives her relief okay fine there are some who will take you know um, an ice pack and keep it below the pillow so that the you know not immediately under the neck but when you're sleeping you keep it below the pillow so the pillow kind of gets a little cooler so your sleep is not disturbed when you're having a hot flash this is a very distressing symptom second what happens is there is a lot of vaginal dryness you know as estrogen levels decrease the vagina also becomes dry and that can cause painful intercourse and some that also you know any which ways estrogen reduces your libido it reduces your desire for sex but the dryness in the vagina and the pain can you reduce your desire even more so a lot of women around perimenopausal time come to us you know, for their sexual disturbances and very um, very mostly it is because of the changes that the body is going through because of menopause so uh, the treatment definitely helps what you can do on your side is probably use vaginal moisturizers or lubricants that will help ease the intercourse and make it less painful so that you know you can combat this symptom this is another presenting symptom changes in skin you know where it was i don't know if it was enough that you go through so much of mental turmoil during this phase and then you suddenly have to fight looking older suddenly the skin becomes dry suddenly uh, you know you see age spots uh, you'll come up with pigmentations a lot of our, our patients come to us for the butterfly pigmentation you know somewhere around the cheeks and the nose and these are all age spots sometimes on the body uh there is um, there is wrinkling of skin you know uh, you, like you can see because of the dryness and uh, because the collagen uh, which is there in your skin which gives the youthful uh, appearance reduces the elasticity drops as you go through menopause and then you start having sagging skin fine lines now i generally say one has to accept uh, the lines but can we not delay this can we not uh, look youthful for a longer period of time so this is what i really advocate um, you know when we are giving homeopathic medicines to a patient for other reasons also not only for skin or for any uh, condition of menopause i have lots of patients who will come for other problems and you know as a by product with homeopathy the skin also improves you know because we in homeopathy don't believe that you and your body are separate your body and you are one so while i'm treating you constitutionally for any other ailment it could be an acidity it could be a constipation it could be hair loss as a i think a by product the skin always improves so you know uh, i'll tell you what we do for skin care but i'll just give you an example uh, when early in my practice i think i was into practice for 7 8 9 years i had uh, a lady walk in and she said that uh, i heard you you know you give medicines to make the skin fair i said no i can't do anything to in, you know make you any fairer than you are because uh, <laughs> i'm going to stop screen here so i said i cannot make you any fairer you are born with the number of melanocytes in your skin again this is getting technical but i explained that you are born with a number of cells in your skin and that is what you are born with you cannot become fair and dark with any medication i said no 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 i know my whole group has been talking about you that if you go to dr sunita your skin becomes fair i said no it doesn't happen it's wellness that shows on your skin you know when your skin is well it will glow it will it will show your internal health so that is something that medicines do homeopathic medicine medicines do so don't say make me fairer say help me become healthier all right this is one thing i really advocate skin care these are my six steps hydrate drink water splash water so you know drink lots of water through the day so people say eight glasses i think eight glasses is an understatement 3 to 4 liters of water is good for you if you are healthy there is no issues with your kidneys you can have 
three to four glasses. Now, I was a person who could not drink water. I mean, I would have like uh, a few sips of water through the day, but I inculcated the habit of increasing the water intake. How? When I was thirsty, instead of having a sip of water, I would have a glass of water. So, you know, in that one sip, I have taken care of about 250 ml water. That's about quarter of a liter. And I would have it multiple times in the day. So every time I thought of water, I would have a big glass of water, sometimes 300 ml, sometimes 350 ml. And, you know, I always keep a bottle by me. So I know that it's like it's a one liter bottle. So I need to complete this in these two hours that I am here. Second, splash water. You know, your skin needs hydration. So every time you take a loo break, go to the washroom, you may not use a face wash or soap to clean your face, but just splash a few times on your face and tap dry. This also helps the skin a lot. Menopause will cause dryness, extreme dryness of skin. So you need to moisturize. I am a firm believer of moisturization. I have a bottle of mo moisturizing lotion at my bedside. Even sometimes in the middle of the night, if I've got up, I don't know, I just kind of press it and remove some and I just do this. Why? You know, because there is dryness. Um, I mean, I'm also, I don't want to tell you my age. You know, I'm practicing for 26 years, so I'm not 24 years old today, okay? So I also, I feel a lot of dryness of my hands and my feet. So I keep moisturizing. So you give moisture, drink water, splash water, keep giving yourself a moisturizer frequently in the day. So maybe two times is a minimum, I will think, but even more. What parts should you moisturize? So we had a dermatologist as a teacher in college. She said, when you're sleeping, all the parts that are exposed, you have to moisturize before sleep. So if you're wearing shorts and sleeping, then your whole legs need to moist get moisturized. If you're wearing full pajamas, then probably your feet and whichever part of your hands are exposed, you moisturize. Your face, you need to moisturize for sure. Use a sunscreen. It's very, very important to use a sunscreen. You know, the ultraviolet rays are very, very bad for the skin. You need to protect yourself even if you are not going in the sun. I'm in a closed room right now. There is no sun coming, but I have my sunscreen on. Why? Because, you know, even if the ray is not directly on you, still the light, the UV lights will deplete your skin of its natural nutrients. So use a sunscreen. Nutrition, another huge topic. I could talk for hours on it, but have good nutritious food. I'm going to come to it subsequently also. For skin, what we need is a lot of antioxidants. That means a lot of colors. What is antioxidant? Name sounds huge, but it's just adding color to your diet. So how can you add color? Have lots of fruits. You know, we have all colors in fruits. So have different fruits, different drinks. Don't have this apple a day keeps the doctor away. Apple will give you only those nutrients, but not everything. So have an apple today, have a banana tomorrow, have musk melon, have watermelon, have all oranges, whatever is seasonal. Have lots of fruits, have colorful veggies. Again, now lots of beautiful, colorful veggies are coming. Have your broccolis and your colored capsicums. Have all, all different. I mean, sweet potatoes. Just add a lot of color in your diet. Sleep. They don't call sleep beauty sleep for no reason. Sleep is the time when your body rejuvenates. All the cells in your body will kind of form again. New cells form. So give yourself that rest and allow the body to repair itself. And skin is our biggest organ. It covers the whole body. So let your body heal. See to it that you are getting adequate sleep. Six, seven, eight hours a day. And again, it can be a long topic in itself, how you can improve your sleep. Uh, we, we could talk about it at a later time. But I you see find ways how that can be get better switch off um, your cell phones an hour before sleep no screen time before sleep read a book do a little bit of meditation whatever works for you and exercise i'm a firm believer all those who know me know that i exercise every single day i don't take any should be, you know, I, it, it will be if something has happened and I cannot go to workout, then 
it's another thing. But exercise has multiple benefits, not just for skin. It relieves stress. It boosts circulation. Skin gets better. Hair gets better. Mind gets better. Very, very important. So these are my six steps for skincare and menopause. This is what every woman goes through. Changes in weight, distribution and weight gain. You wonder, when I was 25, if I just reduced my food by 25%, I stopped having ban chapati, I didn't have sugar for one week, or I you know, took a walk for one hour a day for seven days, I dropped two kilos. And here I do it for a whole month and I see 500 grams weight loss, sometimes 500 gram weight gain. And you wonder what happened? That is menopause. The same amount of work that you did earlier to lose weight when you were in your 20s and your 30s suddenly doesn't seem to happen now. I mean, am I the only one who's gone through this or the others also who are in this uh, age bracket have seen themselves uh, changing in size, changing in weight. I mean, I exercise like nobody's business. I And I'm very cautious of my diet, but I still saw that there were a lot of changes in my weight distribution. Suddenly, there is more girth around the belly. Your metabolism slows down. So the same activity that you did, which helped you lose weight earlier, doesn't help you any longer. About 30% women age 50 to 59 are grossly obese if I can go by the statistics. So if your, if your waist size is more than 35 inches, it's really, really time to, it's a wake up time. Get up and do something about it. It may take time. Women, don't worry. I mean, weight is something people struggle with, but keep doing. You may be slower to see the results, but it will come. If you're eating the right foods and exercising regularly, even if you're going through this phase, you will see a drop. Because if you will gain weight, and especially around uh, the abdomen, it's going to cause a lot of other problems. Heart disease, diabetes, blood pressure, all the lifestyle disorders. So in, you know, it's better that you start taking charge of your life and take care of the weight with the right nutrition and with um, the right exercise. So why I talk so much about exercise all the time. Now, aside from menopause, you know, in menopause, what happens is you are gonna get osteoporotic. You learn to take a walk in the morning, in the early hours, you are gonna take in some vitamin D from the sun. It will lower the risk of osteoporosis. It will lower the risk of heart attack and cardiovascular diseases. Uh, it will keep your muscles strong. You know, so the kind of exercise, you could take up anything that works for you. But I think including a little bit of weight training is something that one should look at. Exercise also takes care of depression and anxiety. It, it keeps you going. You know, it's... Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of, it, it releases a lot of happy hormones and those happy hormones keep you elevated. So if you begin the day with a workout or a walk, you know, the whole day goes good. It keeps your bowel under control. So you select what you want to do. But in menopause, I think, you know, like put getting in some kind of weight training, even if it is small weights, uh, build your muscles. You will also see muscle loss as age advances. You could just, uh, you know, add some walk in your daily regime. And on a daily basis also, you could take small steps. Like, you know, if you can see in this picture, somebody, instead of taking the elevator, can take one flight of steps. I mean, I don't believe you should climb up and down 20 stories in a building uh, at a particular age. If you're really fit and you want to do it, it's good. But other times you will have problems with your knee joints. But you could do one or two flights of stairs two, three times in a day while, while going to the mall or while, um, uh, you know, you're going to work, wherever, change, uh, get up from your seat. So if a lot of us are, you know, like I also sit on the chair for three, four hours at one go, get up, take a walk every hour. Don't be seated in one place. A lot of corporates also, you see them, they get to work for four hours, then they're in their laptop. They've not even got a, gotten up for a loo break. So kind of put in some day-to-day -day activities 
and take care of your health. Nutrition. Now, I'm going to just give you these small, quick steps which help losing weight. Good nutrition is one, but you know, simple things that all of us can do to lose weight. Portion control. See, what is portion control? You're used to eating this much food, maybe three chapatis, uh, maybe a, a small bowl of rice or uh, two katoris of uh, dal. Reduce the quantity of your chapati or your rice. Uh, reduce the quantity of um, the wrong foods. You know, I, I don't really say you should stop eating X, Y, and Z. You really feel like having something uh, which is really not the right nutrition. You can have a small piece. You want binge on a chocolate? Have a small piece of chocolate. Enjoy it for 5-10 minutes in your mouth. But don't go for a whole slab of chocolate. Reduce the quantity of food. Within a week, you'll see your body will get used to it. Finish dinner earlier. See to it that you finish dinner by 7, 7.30. You know, I know uh, some of my friends uh, follow a particular religion and they finish by 6. And I should wonder what they are doing at 6 o'clock finishing dinner and how do they survive? They do. It's okay. I mean, if you can't manage a 6, you can do a 7. You can do a 7.30. You can do it 8 o'clock if you want to, to finish dinner, but not 11 and 12 in the night. I mean, I know people, uh, especially during the lockdown, have all, you know, binged watch, net, binged watch Netflix and Prime and whatever. In, you know, they finish work and then they sit in front of the television and then they are snacking on chips. You can stop that. You say, I finished dinner at whatever, 7.38, and then I don't put in anything in my mouth other than water. So that, that the body, the stomach gets rest at that time and it has enough time to digest what it has already got. Say a complete no to fried foods and sugar. I'm a firm believer of this. All my friends also know she's not going to touch fried foods. So if something is like we've, we've been invited for a function, I remember we had gone for a, a puja in one of my friend's house uh, in the building and there was puri chole for lunch. And she got two chapatis made for me. And we were a big group. She's saying, Sunita will not have puri. You know, so you can decide what you want to do. I have feel, why put in those things that can cause issues? High fried foods, too much calorie. Sugar, too much calorie. You really feel like having, have a small bit. Have loads of vegetables. Vegetables have very little calories. That will help. Add good proteins to each meal and have lots of water. Next, I'm going to talk about some breast changes that happen when uh, you're going through menopause. So again, you know, the glandular tissue in a woman's breast shrinks when the estrogen level drops, and then the breasts become less dense and they sag. So very good idea would be to, you know, support the breast, wear a good quality bra, you need to change it. Because, um, uh, maybe add on an underwire. Lots of people don't know the right kind of bra to wear at different stages in life. So you could go to a good store. There are people now to help what type that you could wear. I would suggest an underwire through the day is a good thing. You can do regular chest exercises that will also improve the musculature and helps the posture. Urinary incontinence can be a big problem. What is urinary incontinence? You know, when somebody coughs or laughs loudly, there's a spurt of urine that passes uh, when they are coughing or laughing. And it is mostly involuntarily. And it can be very, very embarrassing. So what I suggest is you to do kegels exercises. This you can do anywhere. While I'm talking to you, I can do kegels. You can sit and do kegels. You can sleep and do kegels. You can be anywhere in the day. What is Kegel's exercise? You can even go to Google and check. They'll show you some videos. You need to tighten the pelvic floor, you know, and uh, hold the pelvic floor muscles for three to five seconds and repeat it 10 times a day. This is a fabulous exercise. I think every woman should be doing it once at 35, 40, which improves the pelvic floor, which will prevent a lot of issues of urinary incontinence. Hair fall. Menopause can be a very, very big 
reason for hair, hair fall. You know, the problem is you can have hair falling from areas that should not fall and you can start getting increased hair in areas that you don't want hair. So while there is thinning of the parthen, like you can see in this lady here, you can see some extra growth, which is called hirsutism uh, around the, the, the beard area and the mustache area. And this you, homeopathy helps beautifully in hair loss or even hirsutism. So it will be a good idea to check with your homeopath how they can help you with these symptoms. Osteoporosis, as I spoke earlier, when the bones become more porous and lose their calcium. So it's a very, very good idea to be on a regular calcium once you're 30, 35 years of age um, so that you do not uh, go through this phase when you're older. Osteoporotic bones are easy to fracture. And now the most important problem in menopause is the mind the array of distressing symptoms that a woman can go through and a lot of them seek homeopathic help at this time is when they're going through these mental and emotional symptoms. What are the common symptoms that you see in menopause? Depression, irritability, anxiety and panic attacks, crying episodes. You know, I have women who will come and tell me, I don't know why I'm crying. I just feel like sobbing as if it's the end of the world. And really there isn't so much of a problem, then why am I crying so much? But these, these are your hormones that are playing havoc. In fact, I have men who will come and tell me, do something about my wife. She's become so sensitive. The same thing that I told her maybe four years back, five years back, didn't bother her. And now I tell her that one little thing and she's crying. And I'm wondering what? I mean, it's like something, they come and tell me, am I, thodi ho? Am, I, am I like a devil? Ki I am really, really troubling her. No, no, nobody is going wrong. It's the hormones that are playing up. So understand that if you're going through unnecessary panic attacks, unnecessary crying spells or irritability or brain fog, you know, suddenly forgetting things, memory is going bad. Uh, there's a haziness in the mind. You are not able to take decisions properly. These can be symptoms of menopause. Sleep disorders, insomnia. Suddenly you wake up in the night and they are like fresh like a fiddle. You don't know what's happening. You want him to sleep back again. You're not able to sleep. These are also symptoms that could be of menopause. What can be, how will you identify if you are going through depression? Again, this is a long topic. Maybe someday we could talk on depression because we have a lot of people who come to us in homeopathy for treatment of depression and they do beautifully well. You know, I mean, um, I think they are the ones who are most happy because, uh, you know, mental health uh, is something that few people talk about. But I really, really urge if you are going through issues of mental health, take help. We are happy to help. We are here for you. Not just me, I'm talking about the whole medical fraternity. I'm talking about the homeopathic fraternity. Uh, we see women, men coming up with these unusual symptoms, which most of us can feel anytime. But if they are feeling it every moment, every day, maybe continuously for two weeks or more, I think you should, you should look at taking help. You know, suddenly persistently feeling sad, persistently feeling anxious. I mean, all of us feel anxious, no? That doesn't mean we are depressed. I mean, if I had to talk to you today and my work wasn't getting done in the house and I mean, I was like, y'all finish your work so that I can get to my work. Small amounts of anxiety, all of us have. But if you are anxious all the time, if you're sad all the time, if you're feeling that emptiness all the time or a feeling of hopelessness all the time, I think seek help. Don't neglect mental health. It is very important to address it. It is very important to talk to someone that is neutral and non-judgmental about what you're going through. There are so many ways we can help. You know, you, they, people find it difficult to concentrate, make decisions. We have people who come that, I don't know, I don't want to live. 
there is no real major problem in my life but i am only dwelling on suicide all the time some have even attempted suicide and they they wonder what happens that there isn't really a problem that you really want to end your life but this persistent suicidal thoughts persistent pains persistent headache persistent fatigue these are all signs of depression that you can go through during menopause so my only urge is seek help talk to talk to your doctor share what you're going through and take help how do you help your mind so i medically we can help you with medicines but there are a few things that you can do yourself and like a couple of things i have already spoken about exercise for me is prime lots of happy hormones get released it instantly elevates your mood you may go back but at least for some time it keeps you going stop smoking get sleep try to sleep at the same time every day and wake up at the same time don't have erratic sleeping hours like today i slept at 10 now i feel like watching a movie and i slept at 1 and then i to next tomorrow i sleep at 7 then i sleep at 2 don't go about have a you know maybe plus or minus half an hour sleep at the same time wake up at the same time drink less alcohol get to a healthy weight that is also very important so whatever you need to do we spoken about that earlier whether it's your nutrition or it's your exercise plan actually it's both do that come to that weight it may not be your perfect weight but you come to a healthy weight come to a healthy um, abdominal girth like i said more than 35 cm sorry inches more than 35 inches take charge of your life get enough calcium in your diet and this is something that i like to talk about when you are going through menopause this is what helps and of which you know uh connect with support groups all those who know me uh some of you over here may know me but my i i am a firm believer of you know connecting with people i may not have the time to talk to my friends every day but i know if i have a problem i have somebody i can talk to instead of dwelling within you and sulking and not knowing what to do connect to your friends maybe old friends family spouse can you know i mean i and talking to the spouse is another thing like when i am treating a patient with menopause i have a special counseling session for the spouse also girl groups i'm i'm a firm believer as you age you know see when you're younger you are spending all your time studying and you know uh, getting the right scores and then getting into a job or probably getting married then managing your house managing your uh, in-laws family uh, man- getting children and your life is all about that and you've really not had enough time to make friends or have a circle but now is this menopausal time is when you're about 40 45 children have grown responsibilities kind of sometimes get less because now you don't have to feed the child he can eat on his own and things get better responsibilities can get a little better yeah there will be other responsibilities that come but connect with your groups it's very very important husbands how can you support your wife you know they are going through a painful phase so if somebody has a uh, a known diagnosis that they are going through you know uh, some let's say if somebody has cancer you like oh my god they have cancer then you need to support or if somebody has um, an ulcer or somebody has some problem we know diagnosis we can see there is a problem and we want to treat you know menopause is a silent problem you are going through it for a long time your wife is not understanding what is happening and you are not understanding at all what's happening to her but you know how can you help can you show some more love can you just show that you care sometimes without judging can you just sit and listen to her yap about what she's going through that's all that is needed you know you may get her the best diamonds and the best clothes and the best of everything that materialistically you can provide but i think at this particular phase what she needs more is a little time a little care and a little support 
I urge men, if you're listening to this, do this for the women in your life. You know, because if the women in your life, if they are happy, the family is happy. So happy woman makes a happy home. C can you do this much to see that your home is happy, to see that your wife is happy? I think all of this can. And girl groups, I will insist on this. Have groups who you can spend time with, maybe once, I don't know, whatever, once a month, once in two months, I don't know, once in two weeks, whatever works for you. Go out for an outing, maybe walk together in the morning. Sometimes, you know, just relieving what's happening within you helps. Take a swim together, do activities. I mean, you know, we'll see when you're walking in the garden, primarily you'll see a lot of menopausal women. You'll see middle-aged women a lot. They're going back, 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 back. Sometimes you wonder why they're talking so much, but actually it's very important for them. A lot of release of energy. It's best to talk to your friends. Maybe uh, join exercise group together. We have a very group now. It, it's, the, it's a lockdown time and I have not rejoined the gym. So we, we work out on our own, but I was person who would go to the gym you know and more than exercise I loved meeting my friends there you know in our fast-paced life where do we have time to really uh, you know sit and talk to friends there's so much that's happening but one hour while I'm exercising and I'm in the gym I have my whole group of friends there and today they they are probably very very important parts of my life and they, they're almost or even more than family to me, if I can say, because we spend time talking about nothing. You know, one of my teachers said, when I was talking, Ki, what do you all do? Do you all sit and gossip in the gym? I said, no, which ways we are gossiping? You all generally, women have a lot of things to share with each other. Sometimes even being heard. Sometimes, you know, some empathy. I don't know. But it's sometimes that I think it's very, very important that you get into the happy zone do activities together, do activities with your spouse together, you know, maybe, I mean, whatever, if you've, you've inculcated a hobby together, do that, do whatever makes you happy. Don't think menopause as a stop. Think of it as a fresh start. Things are settling as far as children are concerned, as far as life is concerned. Why not make it a beautiful new beginning for you? It's a time for you to do a lot of things that you've probably not done when you were in the whole rigmarole of early childbearing or early marriage, then, you know, growing up kids or whatever. This is one of the most beautiful phases in a woman's life. Let's make it one. Let's today decide that even if I am going through these, these symptoms, I will take help. I will reach out to a medical doctor to help me with the symptoms. I will take some pointers from today's talk or from other sources to help improve my life, to exercise, to see to it the nutrition that I'm having will be healthier. You know, if the my husband very often tells me, you know, I, I love to uh, take help from a nutritionist. Uh, I know what's the right thing to do, what's not. But I always take the help. If whenever I want to cut down a few kilos, I will take the help of a nutritionist and get into a proper diet plan. And she's saying, I'm very happy when you get into a diet plan, the whole cooking in the house changes and everybody's eating healthy and everybody's, you know, uh, looking at the calories that they're having. So go through this phase with a lot of enjoyment. Don't consider it a pause. Enjoy this pause, menopause. Thank you very much. This is what I had to say for myself. And uh, if there is anything that you would like to know more, I am happy to answer. Shazia, over to you. I haven't really read uh, any more of the questions. Yes. See Dr. Geeta asking, have you treated pigmentation on face during this phase? Yes, beautifully with homeopathy. Uh, I told you butterfly pigmentations, very well treated with homeopathic medicines. Uh, which ones to give again, another topic in itself, which I will not share here. 
uh, we take the whole case in homeopathy and we treat individualistically. So uh, that's how, uh, you know, each person is different. So the remedy also is different. So we could, we could help you answer if you will write to us on the email ID. Correct. So, uh, thank you, Dr. Sunita. That was such an insightful session. I'm sure each one of us learned something that we never knew as to how much a woman goes through during this phase of her life and what we can do to ease this phase and make her enjoy this pause of her life, the, the menopause. 